Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on basics of analog multiplexers. In the first part of this series, we discussed two important parameters of the MUX, on resistance and on capacitance. This video will provide an overview of the other two performance parameters of multiplexers, which are leakage current and charge injection. The goal of this series is to understand the DC performance parameters of multiplexers and how they affect data acquisition system performance. This video series explains how the parameters listed in an analog multiplexer's datasheet can be used to understand system performance limitations and error sources. In this video, we will discuss leakage current and charge injection. Specifically, we will see how leakage current can cause offset errors in high input impedance data acquisition systems. We will also discuss the charge injection phenomenon and see how it introduces output voltage error when multiplexer switches are turned on or off. The main goal of this presentation is to highlight these multiplexer parameters and to understand how they impact performance of a data acquisition system. The first parameter we are discussing here is leakage current. Leakage current is an important parameter as it contributes to DC errors both when the switch is on and when it is off. The multiplexer data sheet has many specifications related to leakage current, including leakage current flowing through the source pin, IS, or the drain pin, ID. Leakage current is specified as current flowing through the source, S, and drain pin, D, when the MUX switch is on or off. When the switch is off, leakage current flowing through the source pin and drain pin is typically specified as IS off and ID off, respectively. When the switch is on, we can approximate the leakage current flowing through the source pin and the drain pin to be equal. Leakage current varies with temperature, and a typical leakage current plot for a multiplexer is shown here. Leakage current is typically in the range of a few tens of picoamperes at room temperature to nanoamperes at high temperature. This slide shows the simplified model of MUX leakage current flow when the switch is on and when it is off. When the switch is off, IS off flows through the source impedance at the input, and ID off flows through the drain pin through the load resistor connected to the output. When the switch is on, we can approximate leakage current flowing through the source and drain pin to be equal. That is, IS on equals ID on. The voltage error introduced by the leakage current at the input side when the switch is on is represented by the following equation. V error equals R on plus R source times ID on. Analog input modules and control systems often switch high input impedance sensors, such as pH, optical, humidity, accelerometer, and chemical sensors. All of these sensors exhibit high input impedance, which can vary from a few hundred kiloohms to a few gigaohms. For such high input impedance sources, we can ignore the effect of the MUX on resistance on total error introduced by leakage current. Also, V out of the MUX is usually connected to the non-inverting terminal of an operational amplifier, which exhibits high impedance. So for ease of understanding, let's ignore the effect of load resistance RL. With these assumptions, we can approximate offset error introduced due to leakage current when the switch is on as V error equals R source times ID on. This slide shows an example where the MUX input is interfaced with the high input impedance source. The input source has a source impedance of 1 mega ohm. This multiplexer output is fed into a high impedance input of an 18-bit accurate data acquisition system. Assume that we have two multiplexers, labeled as MUX1 and MUX2. The leakage current over temperature is the only differentiating factor between these multiplexers. The multiplexer leakage current flows through the input impedance, which results in an offset error. The table shown here gives you a quick overview of how different multiplexer leakage currents affect measurement accuracy. Leakage current increases with temperature, and the table shows offset error variations at both 25 degrees C and 85 degrees C. For MUX1, leakage current of 10 picoamps and 50 picoamps over a specified temperature range causes an offset error of 10 microvolts and 50 microvolts, while for MUX2, the leakage current of 100 picoamps and 500 picoamps at specified temperatures causes an offset error of 100 microvolts and 500 microvolts. Since the multiplexer is connected to a data acquisition system, it is useful to calculate the error in codes. The example calculation shows how to translate the error voltage to codes for an 18-bit system with a 5-volt reference. First, the least significant bit, or LSB, resolution is calculated by dividing the reference voltage by the total number of codes. That is, V sub LSB is equal to 5 volts divided by 2 to the 18th, 
which is equal to 19.073 microvolts. Next, the offset error in volts is calculated by multiplying the leakage by the source resistance, which in this case is 100 microvolts. Finally, we divide the offset error voltage by the LSB voltage for a total error of 5.24 codes. Most high input impedance sensors have a low output voltage, so any additional offset introduced due to the input stage can limit the maximum full-scale voltage range that the ADC can see. From the table shown here, it is evident that for a high accuracy data acquisition system, even a few hundred picoamps of input leakage can affect measurement accuracy significantly. Thus, it is important to choose a multiplexer with low leakage current when designing high input impedance data acquisition systems. The next concept that we will introduce is called charge injection. However, before covering, let's review the capacitor charge equation. The charge across the capacitor is defined as the voltage across it multiplied by its capacitance, that is, Q equals C times V. Charge, denoted by Q, is measured in coulombs. This simple example shows that when a charged capacitor is connected to another capacitor, the charge will redistribute across both capacitors and the total voltage will decrease. Initially, the capacitor C1 is charged to 1 volt and the switch is open. The charge in coulombs is computed by multiplying C1 by its voltage, so 100 picofarads times 1 volt, which equates to 100 picocoulombs. When the switch is closed, the total capacitance increases to 110 picofarads as C2 is now in parallel with C1. The final voltage across the parallel combination can be calculated by rearranging the charge equation to V equals Q divided by C. Plugging in the numbers, you can see that the final voltage drops to about 0 0.909 volts. This short reminder should help you understand charge injection as it involves a redistribution of charge. This slide explains how the charge injection phenomenon occurs in multiplexers. Charge injection is the coupling of the switch control signal through a parasitic capacitor. It's called charge injection because the charge from the parasitic capacitance is ejected into the MUX output. Charge injection error shows up as a voltage change introduced at the output of the switch when the switch is turned on or off. Charge injection can occur when we switch any of the control pins of the multiplexer that enable or disable the switch. For ease of understanding, let's assume that the enable pin of the multiplexer is toggled from VSS to VDD as is shown in this slide. Whenever a switch is turned on or off, the gate of the MOSFET is subjected to a step voltage, VDD to VSS or VSS to VDD. This large step voltage injects charge to the output of the switch through the parasitic gate to drain capacitance, or CGD. The amount of charge injected depends on the value of CGD. The change in output voltage depends on the amount of charge injected, Q, I, and J, and load capacitance. The voltage change caused by the output can be given as Q, I, and J is equal to delta V out times C load, where C load can be approximated as CD plus CL. Based on this equation, you can see that a large load capacitance will minimize the effect of charge injection at the output of the multiplexer. Of course, this effect is also minimized if the internal parasitic capacitance that injects the error, that is, CDG, is smaller. This slide explains how the charge injection for a given multiplexer can affect output voltage. Let's assume we have two multiplexers with charge injection as the only differentiating factor between them. One multiplexer has a charge injection of 0.4 picocoulombs, and the other multiplexer has a charge injection of 0.8 picocoulombs. Assume each multiplexer has an output load capacitance on the drain pin of 10 nanofarads. When the switch is turned on or off, the parasitic drain-to-gate capacitor pumps charge into or out of the output load capacitor. The graph shown in this slide highlights the output voltage error introduced by each multiplexer. This voltage error is just the charge injected divided by the load capacitance. So in other words, error equals Q, I, and J divided by CL. Note that the amount of charge injected into the output capacitor also varies with input voltage, so this effect is nonlinear in nature. This slide summarizes the parameters we discussed in this video. Leakage current is an important parameter as it leads to offset errors. For high input impedance data acquisition systems, leakage current in the order of few 10 nanoamperes can also affect system accuracy significantly. Leakage current also varies with temperature, and error introduced due to leakage current is nonlinear in nature so it is very important to choose multiplexers with ultra-low leakage current in such systems. The charge injection phenomenon introduces output voltage error whenever the switch is turned on or off. 
Typically, multiplexers with lower on resistance and higher on capacitance have higher charge injection. Also, systems with smaller load capacitance are impacted more by charge injection, as the injected charge causes a greater change in voltage. For faster switching systems, one should choose a multiplexer with a low charge injection. We discussed how the leakage current and charge injection parameters of multiplexers are defined and how they affect system performance. Stay tuned for the next video, which discusses details on other multiplexer parameters, crosstalk, bandwidth, and off-isolation. Thank you for your time. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.